here's what it looks like. I'll just say, see that? That's what it looks like right there. There's a little roadside place where they make some fresh food. Wow, very nice. And then you can get all snacks. Lots of booze. <laughs> and uh, there's a little quite cheap. And suppose you touch it. Yeah, it's freezing cold. You know, even though it's bubbling, the gas is from below. This is all natural gas. Different sounds from different parts. Central part part of the temple which is called Altar. Here we go. After a good day of traveling. Good morning everyone. It's Tuesday morning. Today we're going to do a whole bunch of things all in one go. I'm going to probably divide this uh, blog up into segments because there's so much to see and I want to keep it you know on a bite-sized event. I've organized the tour. It cost me 95 manat, which is about 45 euros, but that includes all the entries to the places, uh, the food, um, everything that's included. Uh, we're going to be starting off at uh, Gobastan, which is a historic site in uh, Azerbaijan, uh, followed by uh, the first mosque. Um, it's, it's just so, yeah, first mosque ever in Baku. It's uh, Mosque uh, Bibi Habit. And then we're going to go to the first ever oil well. Uh, we're also going to go to the uh, fire temple. So these are, it's a temple because flames and fire has always been historic. That's why in uh, Azerbaijan and Baku they have the flame towers and there's always flames rolling. And even when we went to the, uh, the uh, monument that's up beside uh, the temple, uh, at the top of the flame towers, I'll show you that on the other vlogs. And then also we have uh, Yanjag, which is the, uh, the uh, fire mountains. Uh, we also have the mud volcanoes that we're going to see. Um, so they're all going to be broken down in individual segments. Uh, first off will be the one that we get to first. And it's a whole day event. So the 95 uh, Monat, which is about, like I said, 45, 40 euros. It also includes your transportation, a guide, and also uh, your lunch. We stop at lunch part of the way and we have authentic uh, Azerbaijani food. So stay with me and let's see what this tour offers and all you have to do is go through these walls turn to your right and it's about a two minute walk to the office where we get our bus now we'll just walk around and enjoy enjoy the beautiful sunny day here I have in sunny Azerbaijan okay so we're gonna be taking aboard this uh, it's a white sprinter Mercedes van and we're gonna be heading up there's a group of us here they're from some people from Moscow and Mumbai right beside me. So we're gonna have an enjoying day, I'm sure. See some amazing sights, especially that fire mountain. I'm looking forward to that. And also the mosque is interesting too. So stay tuned, we'll see how it gets on. Part of the tour today is the uh, world's first oil rig. It was first drilled in 1846. The first one ever industrial oil rig in the world is found here in Baku, right beside the stadium there. I think that's for cycling and stuff. It's from the, uh, the European Games that was held here in, I believe it was what, 2015? Or was it 2018? Something like that. Um, and then here you see the Dragon is not far from the Caspian Sea. The Caspian Sea is just literally on the other side of that stadium. And here is the tower itself. We're here for 10 minutes. So it's a 10 minute part of the tour. And here's what it looks like. I'll just see, see that? 
that's what it looks like right there. And then there's one here working. And here's what it looks like when it's actually drilling. I wonder if it's still active or it's just for show. Probably just for show. Let's see, this is what it says. Spud date is 2005. Total depth is 635 meters. Two tons of oil per day, initial production. Current depth is 455 meters. Currently, production rate is one ton of oil per day. So it is actually still working. Hmm, very interesting. So that's the first part. So we've got a uh, whole bunch of things uh, in store today, so stay with me and we'll just see this beautiful city. Baku, look at the surroundings. So we're not far from the actual city itself. Uh, I don't think we go too, too far outside of Baku for all these things, so let's just enjoy what we're having. And if you, if you like what you're seeing, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell. It helps with the algorithm. And if you want to become a channel membership, please, it would help me so much. It said that the uh, second oil rig ever in the world was in the United States at 1859. So way ahead of uh, was Baku, and it really helped increase the amount of production before it was done all by hand. You can see there's two more oil rigs working there too. It's funny how it's just right in the center of uh, Baku. Uh, drilling under the Caspian Sea, which is right here. So it's uh, a couple hundred meters below the ground is still oil producing in uh, Azerbaijan. Now we're heading back to the little sprinter to continue the journey. Okay, so here's the site of the first ever mosque in Baku. A prophet came here, her with her family, because she'd been persecuted by the Arabic leaders at the time and she sought uh, refuge here and her until she died and she was buried here and this was the site of the first uh, mosque was built on top of her tomb and we're talking like 1300s here's the mosque itself so he also said unfortunately the original mosques was destroyed during the time of the Soviet Union occupation uh, and it didn't survive it unfortunately it was destroyed so they've rebuilt it but it, underneath would be her tomb here beautiful and you can see in the background there's the uh, flame towers in the distance Very nice building. I wonder if we're allowed inside. See if, yeah. Let's see. He's given the explanation. There's two of us. So he does it. Gives it in uh, Russian and in English. Eighth century she lived. She was the great 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 grandmother, uh, daughter of of uh, the Prophet Muhammad.
name, please? Misha. Misha, okay. So, this is a map of Azerbaijan, you know. And uh, I usually say so. It's easy to remember, you know, shape of the map. You know, pay attention, please. It's similar to the eagle, right? <laughs> Especially from this part, right? You know, just imagine, this is the head of the eagle. And these are wings, you know, Azerbaijan. Uh, this is Apsheron Peninsula, covered by the sea, Caspian Sea. From the eastern part, Azerbaijan, our country, surrounded by Caspian Sea, totally, everywhere. And our neighbors, five different countries, neighboring countries, Russia from the north, Georgia from northwest, Armenia from west, Turkey from southwest, Iran from the south, and the Caspian Sea as well. Okay, you see this. You know, this is the head of the eel and Apsheron Peninsula. And Baku city is the biggest city in Azerbaijan, and not only, it's the biggest city in the Caucasian region and the biggest city around Caspian Sea as well. Biggest port city around the Caspian Sea. With total population of 3 million and a little bit more than 10 million people live in Azerbaijan. About 30% of population live in Baku city, about 30%. It's the biggest city, so 30% of the whole country. Yeah, all the country. Because the megapolis with its surroundings. It's the biggest city in Caucasia and fourth city. Well developed city. Okay. So total population of the country is about a little bit more than 10 million. Okay. Total area of the country 86.6 thousand square kilometers. Okay. I explained to you about the neighboring countries and the Caspian Sea, you know, the oil and natural gas, the main field of the industry and economy. Our the economy is mainly based on the extraction of oil and refinery as well, and some different processors, okay? So, and agriculture is well developed here as well. Not only oil and natural gas industry and chemical industries develop, towards the north from Baku city there is one of the biggest cities which is called Sungait city famous for its chemical production the center of chemical products okay like there are a lot of factories which serve to the oil natural gas industry chemical industry and building materials industry and landscape in terms of landscape it's landscape, Azerbaijan, like, you know, the surrounded from the north, surrounded by greater Caucasus mountains, okay? Lesser Caucasus mountains located in the western part of Azerbaijan. Uh, there are plains, flatlands, it's called Kuraras flatlands, okay? Like about 45% mountainous area, and there is 55%, up to 60% flatlands and plains as well. Agriculture is well developed, like fish industry, Cattle breeding, sheep breeding as well, okay? Not only oil and natural gas. Cattle breeding, agriculture, sheep breeding, you know, fruit trees, a lot of fruit trees, fruits and vegetables are planted, are grown here as Azerbaijan here. You know what is the symbol of our country as fruit? Which fruit the is this? The pomegranate. Pomegranate, right. The highest point goes for it. <laughs> okay, good, you know. <laughs> Long grenade is the symbol of Azerbaijan. More than 60 species of palm grenade are planted here in Azerbaijan every year. And it's a uh, autumn season, it's time of crop or harvesting. Okay. And at the end of October, every year, end of October, festival dedicated to palm grenade is held in the central city of Azerbaijan. It's famous for its palm grenades. Every year, go China. Five, ten minutes to stop and get a drink, a tea break or that. And then we're heading to the mud volcanoes. Uh, the mud volcanoes, Azerbaijan is number one in the world. There's over 800 uh, mud volcanoes located in the world. 350 of them are located in the territory of Azerbaijan. So that's what we're going to next. This is a little roadside place where they make some fresh food. Wow, very nice. And then you can get all snacks. Lots of booze. <laughs> and uh, there's a pot of tea. And snacks. And then your man makes uh, tea up front. Here's a little 
fancy popcorn candy snacks. Look at these. These are cool. So, we're gonna be heading off. Next stop is going to be the Mud Volcanoes. Number one in the world. At this point, we're changing vehicles because where the mud volcanoes are, it's a more off-roady type. So we have to change vehicles, get into these uh, other vehicles to get us up to them to the mud uh, volcanoes. Let's see what they're like. Okay, this is where we're getting into. It doesn't look much different, doesn't it? Yeah, you can leave it. Here we go. Get in here. Go ahead. There we go. <laughs> At least I have a window this time, so the window's good. <laughs> you know, they stepped on the volcano. Yeah. Here we go. Explore these mud volcanoes. You can see it's all around here. Um, it says you can touch them, just don't step in them because you could, A for one, destroy your shoes. And uh, you can uh, get stuck in it. They said you can touch it. Here's the mud volcano. Slowly coming out. Oh, it is cold. Interesting. That's cool. Take a picture. What it looks like inside. See, it's bubbling there, bubbling away. Here's another example of a large one. Not as bubbly as the other one. There's our little bus that took us up here. Look at the view around. Now it's very windy, so probably getting some distraction with that, but uh, there we go. Take a picture of my phone now. About to the main guy. So this is the mud volcano. Like I said, there's over 800 in the world and almost half, so about 350 said, are located within the borders of uh, Azerbaijan. But they're all over the place. You can go and take a look at them all. So, definitely interesting. It's worth the trip. Uh, so, so far we've had the, the uh, first oil rig. We've had the mosque, which was the great, great, great granddaughter of Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, uh, or tomb is. And then we had the snacks at the uh, little shop, and now the mud volcano. Okay, he, the guy told me to come here. Look, you can sort of see it. It's actually bubbling up. I seen it. Look at it. Look at that one. See it bubbling away. Supposedly, you can touch it. Yeah, it's freezing cold. You know, even though it's bubbling, the gas is from below. This is all a natural gas area. So it causes the, uh, the clay to come up. By the time it gets to the surface, it's cold. Just don't step in it. <laughs> Not that you want to, but that's pretty cool. It's a World Heritage Site from UNESCO since 2007. It, it goes back to 20,000 years ago, people were living here. There's over 6,000 
petroglyphs that are located in this area. Um, they used to use even uh, rocks as musical instruments and that. So it goes back that they had a culture. They used to, they were hunter gatherers and they also had like a religion of some sorts where they'd perform dances before hunting and then after hunting. We're here for a half an hour to walk around and see what we can see. Ancient people, you know that carving today. Scientists, ancient people, they used to, they had their own rituals. Rituals for hunting, before and after hunting. They used to use this special musical instrument because oh, wow. it sounds, it makes different sounds from different parts. different echo actually there are limestone and there are some hollows inside empty from different parts on the way I, I will show you this the view of these limestones exposed to erosion different view the world heritage list is included in UNESCO world heritage list the name is Gobustan Gobustan means like mountain pass or place full of rocks and stones <coughs> That looks like hard work. Huh? Hard work. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, the symbol, official uh, symbol of Gobustan region, which was included in UNESCO World Heritage List. Okay, this is the symbol of Gobustan. It symbolizes group dance by ancient men, ancient humans, ancient people of Gobustan. They used to dance. Since we know that they were hunters, you know, before they had traditions or rituals, religious rituals, before and after hunting. Before hunting, this was a sign of prayer by ancient men. And after hunting, like the group dance. This was a sign of gratitude to their gods. They used to pray sun to moon and other. You see here, this is the symbol of both, right? You can find here, this is the symbol. It means that before, uh, they were sailors. Caspian Sea was nearby. Okay, you see now is Caspian Sea far from this point. But before sea retreat, before ice age, Caspian Sea was closer to this territory. And some of them they were sailors. And these are vertical lines. They are symbols of sailors. And this is the symbol of the sun. On this is like the right side. On the top is the symbol. It means that they used to pray the sun, the moon, and the sky in different periods. How old? How old buildings? Uh, different, different. Like Mesolithic era, Upper Stone era, like thousands of years ago. It, it's shown here. Like Mesolithic means Middle Stone Age. And this is the symbol of hunter, yep. you know, with bow and an arrow, and these zigzag shape lines they are symbol of the rain because rain was a symbol of abundance by ancient mm -hmm. people okay this is the symbol of shaman for example another interesting view or image this is a shim symbol of shaman you know what is shaman shaman is, was religious leader who conducted these religious rituals okay who conducted they all these religious rituals and symbols of different ancient men for example man is praying raising his hands and praying like for abundance for you know hunting for rain you see raise his hands and praying you know this is the symbol with horns symbol of wild bull because they use the place as shelter during the wild animals attacks or during thunderstorms are exposed to erosion unfortunately some of them were washed off and they were not clear so they were not visible I don't know if the GoPro picks it up exactly I'll try to get it highlighted but right there you can see the outline of a bowl right there. 
some view here. You do get some steps in. Okay, you can, the, the place is called a bull's shelter. Why they call this bull's shelter? Because uh, many pictures of bulls were found mm -hmm. here in this shelter, especially, for example, this one, this one. And according to scientists, they carved these the bigger ones earlier and accordingly smaller ones later. Sea retreat process, okay? Like, for example, uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago, Caspian Sea water level was there. Near yeah. there. This was the first okay, level, yeah. and this is the second level, third and fourth level. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. This is the example of climate change here in Azerbaijan thousands of years ago. Or drinking water. Okay, like the other result of rainy weather. And they had traditions praying before <laughs> hunting and after for, you know, their hunting, uh, like wood and they will succeed or not. They have traditions of praying and grove dance and like the symbol of abundance. Rainy weather was the symbol of abundance by ancient humans, ancient people. The end of Kogestan. It was much worth it. Short little tour enough, but it, when you add it with all the other ones, it's very, very well worth your time and your value to come here. And now we're heading back into the van. Our journey's not over yet. Now we, we, we go to lunch, and then we head to the fire temple and then the fire mountains. This nation for our lunch. Oh, a little stiff after that ride. It was about a 65 kilometer journey uh, back into the city of Baku from where we were. So now we're heading in for a traditional um, Azerbaijani lunch. It's good timing too because I'm kind of hungry now. Look at that old car. Nice little door. Here we go in. A little stuff there. Here's your man watching the place. Thank you. So this is all for you. This is all for you. This is all for you. This is for you. This is all 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 for just gonna wash our hands and that before we have our meal. So the first start, soup with lemon, bread, and I'm not sure what kind of drink that is. It's different. Uh, sweet, but it's flowery or something. And then they're bringing on some water. Fire Mountains first and then we're going to the Fire Worshippers Temple and we'll see that that's supposedly they're really interesting places and we'll talk about that when we get there. We've arrived at our destination for the, the Fire Mountains, Jan Darig. It's called in uh, Aber or by Jenny. He's just going to get the tickets and then we're going to head up and go take a look what this looks like. Souvenir shop, museum, playground, Yenar Dang, Burning Mountain. We have 20 minutes to spend okay. here. Go down, please. Yep. Downstairs, okay? We have oh, here we are. Okay. Yenar right there. And then we have burning rocks. So these have been going burning for thousands of years. Well, you can feel the heat off them. Don't cross red line. 
Yeah. yeah, you can feel the heat coming off it really hard. See a lot of people are throwing coins in there on it. This is burning. Wow, the heat's really strong here. You really see, you feel the heat coming from there. Wow, you could barbecue something on this. Yeah, it's very warm. Center. There you go. It's way turn off there, just it's all it's on. Oh, it's red light smashing. Uh, it's going. You don't have to do anything. I can take a picture from it still. It's Hashtag Yan Narek. Yan Nardek. It's very windy up here. The top of the mountain. Here's where we're Okay, I don't think there's much more. It stops right here. But this used to be a lot more on fire. But in World War II, the Germans used to bomb this because it supplied Soviet Union with uh, gas and that. So they, they tried to put out most of it. So there's still left over a small portion. So there's a pony over there grazing. Little walk area there. Place, to, place for kids to play in the swings and that. It's very windy. Don't be blown away. And then we'll head back. Maybe go to the bathroom before we head back. There's a little shop there too. Maybe get a drink of water. A little thirsty after lunch and the drive. And the next stop is we're going to is the fire worshiper temple. And he mentioned that it was really important because there was three different sects of worshippers there. Uh, one from, you know, this area, another area, and even northern India, the Sikhs, that worship fire. So three different type of communities, both all worshipped at the same place. And there it is again, the burning mountain. So it's been going for, they're not really sure exactly how much I've worked on wine. It's a, some say it's about 4,000 years. So I don't know. It's still pretty neat place we're stopping today is the fire worshippers temple it's been rebuilt um, he was saying to us that uh, uh, in 1975 the Indian Prime Minister at the time she came and visited even though it was under the Soviet rule they came and they she encouraged them to start to rebuild it and then after independence they really they've really revamped it up so now it's a proper place of worship and he said it was three different uh, religions that uh, followed it. The Azteki, uh, which were originally from Iran and Azerbaijan, they were kicked out by the Muslims at the time, uh, early, like, centuries ago. And then, of course, there's uh, the Nor uh, Hindi from India that worship it, and also a, um, a Sikh from northern India that worship fire. So those three... <laughs> Worship together at this place. Representatives of different fire worshippers worshipped here side by side. Three different communities: there were Sikh community, Hindu community, and Zoroastrian community. Before Islamic period and after Islamic period. Since 16th century, the different three representatives of three different communities came here because suddenly Indian merchants they revealed this abundant place because they were merchants, they were at trade relations along the great historical Silk Road. There's a Sanskrit up there. The unique temple, this is the central part of the temple, which is called Altar, okay? You see here, yeah. This is the inscription here shown in ancient Sanskrit or Indian language. Okay, this is the central part, main part of this temple. It's just called Ateshka. Central part, okay, according to Zoroastrian religion, 
four elements of the nature, they are separate. Okay. Like, you know, you see here rectangular building, four elements like water, fire, wind, and earth. This symbolizes four corners. They are symbols of water, fire, wind, and earth. There is nothing special here. Start interesting rules here. For example, this one. Yeah. Each yeah. room they had for used, they were used for different purposes. So, yeah. for example, one bath house before prayer, they used to take shower according to religious rules. Okay. So, these are symbols of castles around Baku city and in Azerbaijan. Why? Because during Middle Ages, many castles they were built around Azerbaijan during Middle Ages in order to defend Great Silk Road and trade routes from enemy attacks. Okay, they are castles for defense purposes and watch towers as well. Five corners, like a pentagonal yeah. shape, because this was according to the ancient Zoroastrian architecture style from top side behavior. What does it mean? lies on the hot limestone and gradually burns part of his body which means that he purifies his soul and body from sins and uh, become innocent and this is a symbol of musical instruments perform the musical breathe musical instrument during prayer this way they believe that they expel evil from the room during prayer and they are listening crematorium they used to burn dead bodies indians so and they had quite different ritual or funeral ceremony they built they had a traditional building some different silence towers and put dead bodies on the top okay because direct they didn't burn they didn't bury they didn't drawn into the water because it was forbidden for different elements of the nature according to Zoroastrian religion it was forbidden to bury to bur pollute it okay that's why they had quite different funeral traditions but this is made by indians includes the tour we're just going to be driving back to baku in our van right now hope you enjoyed it so please remember to hit the uh, subscribe button hit the like it helps with the algorithms and don't forget, you can always be a membership of my channel. Thanks again for watching. There's more, still more to come in Baku. English breakfast, yeah, that's right. It's uh, O'Malley's there. Yeah. So after this tour, I'm dying for a pint of something. Hopefully they have it here. I don't know what it's like. I know they feed the cats, which is a good sign. There you go. Oh. Hey, smoke inside here. There you go. You're happy. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I am so thirsty. Um, what do I have? You can have baby like. Uh, Shall I give you a menu? No, no, it's I just want we, we, do you want a drink? Yeah, but what can you I guys have the world that Thank you. Likes See everyone likes it. She doesn't yeah. like it. She hates it. But <laughs> everyone everyone likes it. Um How I have. On draft we have only Amstel. I know. Amstel? No. Oh, okay, uh what is the Effies like in the is that a... It's a draft one. Draft yeah? One. I'll try the Effies there, yeah. I know they have Guinness in a can, but uh, I'd rather try that. What do you have in there, huh? Um, do you have any Bacardi? Yeah. I'll have Bacardi. Single, double? Double. Without you don't, you don't even know the sizes that they have here, though. <laughs> see what your single is like. Yeah. Because it depends on different countries. Okay, there's some music in the background. So I'll just pour my beer. Regular. Oh no, no, so That's bad. enough. <laughs> two. <laughs> two would be half the glass. <laughs> Cola, regular? Zero? Zero. Zero. Please. Here we go. After a good day of traveling. Cash. Cash. Okay. 